All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you <clears throat> The Black Company, book number one by Glenn Cook. This book is about a 10 to 11 book series. This is book one. I've got several versions here I'm going to show you. So, um, came out in 1984. Let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. We've got the 1984 version here, and then we've got the version that they just released a few years ago. This one has a cover done by Keith Burdak. Looks very much like a 1980s horror novel. We've got the, we've got the bad guy with the skull mask and the uh, dagger jammed into the satanic pentagram. It just looks cool. And I love the font up here. Now this one is equally as cool. We've got this great cover by Sam Rakeland. Um, just dynamic, flashy, lots of emotion and energy in that. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the font on this one is a little more crazy and I like it a little. This is just plain, oh, you know, like New Times Roman or whatever. Um, you know, this wraps around to the back, has a nice look on the back. This one just has the black. But that's fine. This is this is 80s. This is 2000 and, uh, you know, 20 or 3, 23, whatever. Which one do I like better? You know, I like them both quite a lot. However, I am going to give the nod to the older one just because for nostalgia reasons and just because I like stuff from the 80s. And I just think stuff from the 1980s is cooler than stuff now. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell by the t-shirt that I may or may not be wearing. But anyway, um, the Black Company covers. Both good. I give this one the slight edge. Now, there's also another version of that I have here. And if you're going to collect this series as a whole, um, you can go on eBay and get all 10 books, the little paperbacks, or... The, you know, Tor.com has re-released all of the series in these omnibus editions. There's four omnibuses. So this omnibus edition has the first three novels in it. And that would be The Black Company, Shadows Linger, and The White Rose. So you can get the omnibus editions. That's probably what you're going to have to get is the omnibus, omnibus editions because they are readily available in all the bookstores and on Barnes & Noble. If you want to collect each individual small paperback you're going to have to go on eBay, and it's going to be pretty hard to find. And to get ones in mint condition is virtually impossible. So um, luckily, I have all of the originals that I bought. Anyway, um, so that is that. What is the Black Company about? Um, well, it's about mercenaries and uh, warriors. It's uh, Stephen Erickson, who wrote Malazan Book of the Fallen, says that this was his main inspiration. And you can see, as you read this, you can see why. <laughs> Now, let me just get, before we get into the plot and character and things like that, let me just talk about the writing style and what you're getting into. This is very sparse writing. This is um, short sentences, crisp sentences. I compare The Black Company to a lot of what Elmore Letter, Leonard does in the mystery field, which is just very crisp, very witty dialogue, um, kind of very... Quentin Tarantino-esque dialogue in this. Uh, a lot Joe Ambercrombie-like, uh, Steven Erickson-like. I would compare the writing style, though, to this, to this. Whereas, like I said, this was an inspiration for the Malazan Book of the Fallen books. Um, crisp writing style mystery. Crisp writing style. Very sparse writing style mystery. Very sparse writing style fantasy. I would compare that to... Um, in the mystery genre and the um, fantasy genre, we've got very, very wordy, very, very descriptive Steven Erickson. Even though the Black Company inspired Steven Erickson, Steven Erickson is very epic, very wordy, just like Elmore Leonard inspired Elizabeth George. Her mysteries are hugely wordy, huge and epic in scope. So... Those are the comparisons I would make. And you can see the different sizes of the books. Sparsely written, 
very long, very, very wordy, sparsely written, very, very wordy. Anyway, let's move on from that and just get into the book itself. So there's a grim town of Byrel, B-Y-R-E-L, and there's the Mole Tavern. All of our heroes are sitting in the Mole Tavern. They're mercenaries. They're fighting. Um... And they're guarding this town. Um, and right from the beginning, we get their personalities because they're conversing with each other. And they converse with each other as mercenaries would. If you've read Joe Abercrombie or Steven Erickson, you, you, you understand what I'm talking about. If not, just imagine what it might be like to be gathered around a campfire with a bunch of soldiers or firemen or police officers. And the kind of conversations that they might have, the way that they talk to each other, the crude jokes that they tell, just the banter back and forth, this humor is dark and, and oftentimes politically incorrect. And that's the characters that we've got. And we're telling this epic, epic tale through the eyes of these grunts on the ground, these mercenaries that are just sort of guarding this town of Byril. And they get in a fight, right? So they're having a... They get in a fight right there in Mole Tavern, and we get to see all of their personalities emerge just through this bar brawl that happens, and how each one of the different characters handles the fight, which ones use their swords, their wits, their magic, all of that. So, this book is told in the from the first person um, from a character called Croker, who seems to be like a cleric or a healer or a medicine man amongst the group of mercenaries, but also like a competent fighter too. But it's told through his perspective. He's kind of got like a, a cynical view on the world and the people around him, and uh, he can size them up pretty quickly. Um, we've Some of the people in the mercenary band are Curly, Mercy. Mercy is the platoon leader. He's, he's a small guy, but he's got small man syndrome where he's really cocky and maybe a little too um aggressive for his size um one eye and tom tom they are uh brothers tom tom one eye of course has one eye tom tom of course carries around a drum that he which is cool because a lot of the jokes are have, have a little drum roll at the end anyway um silent and match elmo candy goblin all of them have like kind of these nicknames that they've been given like our main guy croaker um, which also explains how Steven Erickson was clearly inspired by the Black Company, because most of Steven Erickson's characters have just one names, just little names like that, you know? <clears throat> you know, things like Silent, Trickster, uh, Cutter, you know, things like that. Uh, anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. So what happens is these guys get involved in mercenary-like activities throughout the book. You get to see all of these grand things happening around them in this grand fantasy world from their point of view, which is pretty low on the totem pole. They're just mercenaries. They are not like... that. None of them are like the orphan farm boy that's going to be going off and finding his destiny. None of them are... Uh, you know, the evil lord that is going to take over the place. None of them are kings, queens, princes, or princesses. In fact, they very rarely even run into those type of people. But they do run into a lot of bad people. And a lot of people up to no good. And they end up kind of getting wrapped up in a few little adventures that are fun. But it's kind of like a D&D, &D, like a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, where they venture into different areas of the city and landscape, into tombs and dungeons, into nests of vampires and werewolves, or even worse, and we get to see each one of them as they encounter these things. We get to see what Silent can do. We get to know what Elmo can do. We get to know who's got the battle axe, the sword, the magic, the healing powers. All of that kind of comes out through each adventure that we do, and the writing is very crisp, on point, very well done, very effortlessly done. The dialogue is very, like I said, it's like watching a Quentin Tarantino film about fantasy people. And it's just really, really, really well done. It's, it's for 1984, it's way ahead of its time. Way, way ahead of its time. And I can see why maybe in 1984, 
It probably wasn't the most popular series, but it's kind of developed a pretty good-sized cult following at this point. Um, and I'm on board for it, and we're going to be reading and reviewing each one of these books, all 10 or 11 of them, in um, order of their publication. And uh, so the first one, Black Company, gets a... I'm going to give it a 9.99 out of 10. I mean... There's a few little the, the ticky tacky things that um I think it just moved too fast honestly, um, but that's part of it. I think Elmore Leonard mystery novels zoom by me too fast also, but that's part of the charm of both. Anyway, that's my review of Glenn Cook's The Black Company. <laughs>